everyone, welcome to my take. Today I'm here with my friend Hadil. Hello. Because I just recently passed my Viva, I wanted to share that experience before I forget about it. I know everyone has his own uh, experience and maybe my experience won't be that similar, but at least I can share that one experience yeah. that may be similar to other people or may help other people. If I, if I did it, you can do it. And it is not that scary moment because I was afraid of the final year Viva from day one of my PhD and that wasn't the right way of thinking because of course it's not going to be the same person that started this PhD after three or four years you're a completely different person so anyway without a lot of you know details let's let's go through it so the main thing that I think helped me and I'm very sure it's going to help you first is writing a good thesis. So the moment that you have your thesis finished, you're gonna start to feel that you worth this degree and because you wouldn't be able to write that the amount of work, the quality, the amount of paper that you've been through, all these things gonna give you confidence. So that's why I was I was saying in the beginning of that video, it wasn't right to think about my Viva when I was first year student. Mm -hmm. because it wasn't fair um, I was that like junior student that yeah I, I didn't have any experience with yeah it feels know, like research. a mountain at the beginning exactly. but once you start climbing the mountain exactly. the, the remaining distance is a lot shorter so a lot of that fear okay went away let's say um, when I when I've given my when I submitted my, my thesis uh, this is one thing and you're gonna feel it you're gonna have that confidence uh, the other thing that helped me, you need to choose your examiners wisely. So one of the things that uh, help you is, I think the very first moment when you introduce yourself in the Viva, uh, it's really important that you thank your examiner, y your examiners that first they have read your thesis, they are long thesis, Okay, so they given their time, effort to read and understand and they came. So if you thank them, somehow this is a nice opening for, for this uh, important event yeah. that you show appreciation uh, yeah. of what they did. And, um, and it starts you off on a positive note. Yes. So the other thing that helped, helped me as a student that made my Viva experience easy and I'm very sure it's gonna help any other student is I know Sundas have mentioned that in her uh, tips for Viva is that uh, you should give a presentation because when you give a presentation you show your understanding of the knowledge and this will help a lot of the general question like why did you choose that topic and what motivates you and what's the general aim you're going to cover a lot of that in your presentation so it's going to be maybe it's going to be shorter by but maybe it's going to be more specified uh it's it's a lot easier to say it in a presentation than you answer a very long question that you don't know it's going to keep going and going the answer you don't know for how long so uh i think that's one of the things that Help me, and I can see that uh, the examiner, the examiners, they like it, and it helped them to feel that this student understand much about their topic, and now we can go into the specific details in their work that we need clarification. So this is one of the things that maybe it's scary for some student, but it actually will give you confidence. And I think one of the things, maybe it's a minor issue, but I think it's nice to uh, do your presentation standing because it will show that you feel how serious it is and it's more professional to do it standing, even, even if it's a small room and the audience is just two people, uh, it's so much better that you show your body language and your eye contact and uh, you're m much more in control uh, when you're doing it standing than when you do it do do your presentation 
while sitting. And you might be expected to do it standing also. I, I, was, I was pretty yeah. much expected at my Viber to give a stand up presentation. So um, I think, well, I'm gonna say how my Viber started. Um, at first, I was asked to do a presentation. It was like 15 minute presentation. Uh, this was followed by a question that um, you need to repeat all of that using lay words. Imagine that you're talking to a person, because I came from a science background, so imagine that you're talking to a person who's not from science and you want to, let's say, convince him that this work is uh, important or you want to apply for a, a grant or something like that what type of words that you're going to say and that's very tricky question because you don't think that much about your work from that perspective you don't think about how you translate it or how you explain it in a very simple word without um, like changing the meaning maybe mm -hmm. yeah yeah so most of the discussion at the beginning wasn't really about my work it was about uh, when you start your own lab, let's say, when you start your own career, how you take that work further. Uh, for example, what type of mouse mod model that you need to do uh, or to have to answer the most important question that you need to answer, for example. So I think each student need to think about the next step, but need to think about carefully mm -hmm. about the next story, maybe not just like a future direction or something like that. So this took a lot of our discussion was about what to do um, in the future. And we went to a lot of details and I appreciated that because I felt uh, that the examiners is trying to force me to think as if I'm in a situation where I'm I'm in charge and I have my own lab so what what do I need to do with it and mm -hmm. they kept on emphasizing on what is the most important question that you need to answer and why you need to answer that question and why it is the most important question obviously oh. <laughs> so these kind of things mm -hmm. uh, and maybe you prepare for your viva but you don't prepare that much for these kind of things so you need to be aware um, the other thing that helped me with my viva experience is i did mock viva mm -hmm. so uh, mock viva somehow gives you the feeling of how does it feel but you know what maybe 10 percent only of the question that i had in my mock viva happened in the real viva because um, because the, back, the mock viva is, is something done by your supervisor and you and your supervisor all came from the same background. So somehow with the mock viva I expected what kind of question I will be asked. But with the actual viva I didn't expect those questions because their background is different. It's similar, we have a lot of similar background but I didn't think a lot about their background and now I understand why they were asking me these questions. So I think each student need to read carefully about the background of their examiners and uh, if there is anything linking your work with their work, is there any um, kind of question, something gap in between that when they read your work, they're gonna feel that they need to ask you about this. And you know what? The examiners are not asking to put you in a situation awkward or anything. They're asking you because they're interested in your work. They like your work. So that's the more question actually because they like your work. So don't be worried about, you know, too much question. Maybe that means that my work is not, uh, you know, good enough or something yeah. like No, it's not like this. Yeah. So, so overall, I feel you had a very positive experience. And it is, it is. I think yeah. because I I went there expecting the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that Sometimes that helps because then you, it helps. Then you know things can only get better. <laughs> <laughs> you expect the worst exactly. or don't have any expectations. Exactly. exactly. So. But I try. I I mean a lot of situation. I felt like this is it I'm not gonna pass but I tried to keep smiling yeah and I tried to make it 
to, to make it feel the environment to make it feel as it's it's fun it's okay i know that i'm gonna pass you know yeah, so yeah. when you have this feeling and you know your stuff like if you feel that confidence in yourself <laughs> then other people are more likely to feel confident true, in true, you true. it was really wonderful experience mm -hmm. overall yeah. and uh, if you're a like fourth year student or you're writing your thesis you need to be looking forward for this because it's like the only chance that you're talking about your work mm -hmm. um, and and you, you've never talked about your work this this much and you yeah. need to convince this it's like marketing yeah. look at my work look at what I did and I thought I would never be able to talk for four hours yeah I thought, how can you talk four hours about a real project? That's impossible, it's too much time. And I can, you know, especially as a scientist, when you have to be able to summarize your work mm -hmm. concisely in, you know, a minute or so. One, one minute compared to four hours, that's a big range, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, um, but once you're there, you just get talking and it's just so natural and casual that it just kind of, I mean, it's casual at times, of course, it gets intense too, but it, gets um, it does get intense. There are very detailed questions as well, but the, you kind of eased into that yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I recall from my experience is that if you felt at some point they were asking you about something and you start to realize at that time, at the Viva, you realize that you made a mistake. It's okay to say, well, I, I, I made a mistake, I'm sorry. Can you tell me what's the better approach to, let's say, do that analysis? It's okay to say that, just be humble, be honest, and say that you don't know when you don't know. Uh, but don't overuse it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you need to have that balance between knowing and say or offer what you know about the field or saying that you, you actually don't know. Mm. I think these are the things that um, Sundas touched in your in your my first video. video. <laughs> but, it's, but it's great it's, to know that you know it's applicable the because that's yeah that's that's the reality. Yeah, I mean that's the reason I made the video because I, I thought they were kind of general tips that can apply to all vibers and it's nice to you know be getting feedback and to know that it is helping other people and you know, really happy, Hadil, that you had such a great experience and we got through it and, you know, we went through, we went through our PhDs together and we had a lot, a lot of ups and downs ups and, downs. and it was worth it in the end. Yeah. I think we both agree on that. Definitely worth it. And it's not as scary as, you you know, it's, it's not scary as you hear. Um, you often see, you know, phrasing such as surviving the vibe. You know, that kind of terminology can be quite scary in itself. Um, so I prefer to say getting through or an easier term that doesn't make you feel as though it's something, I don't know, something so big and difficult that you can't achieve it easily. You can with the right preparation and with the right outlook. I think one of the things that um, I kept on hearing that the first year Viva is easier than last year Viva but I think what happened with me was the opposite because yeah. in your first year you don't know that much uh, my aims wasn't clear um, I didn't have that much knowledge I know a bit but also I didn't have any experience with Viva before so to me first year Viva was horrifying but final year Viva I had a lot of confidence because I had a lot of preparation. Actually, you you already um, start preparation by the papers that you read while writing your thesis. And by the time you write all that amount of thesis, even if you didn't prepare, I'm not saying you shouldn't prepare, but even if you didn't prepare, mm -hmm. that person who wrote that thesis, he understand the logic behind things yeah so I think that's the main thing you know more than you think you know yes <laughs> but prepare like for example how did I prepare I I had a lot of documents of question and answer expected question and answers um, most of them were specific to my work but I also had an answer for general question like why did you choose that topic and what's the main aim and you know, summarize your thesis because I was worried that at that time I'm not going to be able to say it even if it if it's something naturally I'm not going to be able to say it if I didn't wrote it and have it in front of me. Yeah. So um, I prepared everything I expect. I wrote it down. 
but as I said, you, that maybe only 10% of that came yeah. into. But when you have that answer, you say it pr proudly. Yeah. <laughs> and and they can feel that you prepared for that answer. You can feel your strength, point of strength and weakness. So it's okay to say you don't know uh, at some point, but um, if you know something, just keep on talking. <laughs> I hope you found this information and video useful. If you did, please like, subscribe and comment in the comment section below this video. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.